It is finally time for the Nintendo Switch review. Woo! Let's not even delay anything and just, let's just do it. All right, here we go. So some of you may still be wondering, what on earth is this Nintendo Switch device? Well, first and foremost, it's Nintendo's seventh home video game console, following the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super Nintendo, the N64, the GameCube, the Wii, the Wii U, and now, the Nintendo Switch. It's also their sixth portable console, which we'll talk more on that later. And that's the ingenious hook behind the Nintendo Switch. Imagine playing your favorite PlayStation game or Xbox game or Wii game or whatever, but not only playing it on the TV, but also bringing it with you everywhere you go. It's amazing. Or, for instance, take it from this other angle, imagine playing your favorite portable game like Pokemon and playing it on the big screen TV. Well, all of the above is possible with the Nintendo Switch. All right, well, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch as a console. So it comes with this dock that has fantastic cable management and allows you to hook it up to the TV, just like any other console. It fits nicely, although, although some people have reported that the dock actually bends inwards and might scratch your Switch. Um, I've never had a problem with that. Just, you know, be careful with your stuff. There are third-party docks available, but those are a little bit scary. They're pretty small and they work great for the most part, but all of them seem to have at least one, a few reported issues of bricking your console. So yikes, use at your own risk. Nintendo's official dock certainly gets the job done, but unfortunately it won't fit in many media centers because the console slides in from the top and the games, at least the physical games, are loaded from the top as well. So keep that in mind. The included Joy-Cons detach very easily for gameplay, they are a little bit small, but they are comfortable enough and have this really nice premium texture. Uh, also, the included Joy-Con grip works really well. Some say they don't like the look or the feel, but seriously, if you want a traditional controller experience, you have that right out of the box. Or if you want to use two Joy-Cons for multiplayer mode, which is amazing that you can use two Joy-Cons for multiplayer mode out of the box, uh, the Joy-Con straps that come with it work really well, but they can be tricky. Uh, again, just like the dock, yeah, just pay attention. I absolutely loved playing Wii games and by extension Wii U games with the Wiimote and the Nunchuck. I feel like it's very ergonomic and I can just lay out on the couch however I want to. And thanks to the design of the Joy-Cons, you can do that with the Switch as well. So I am a big fan of that. The Switch does have a fan, but it is quiet. Also, the controllers and the system use USB Type-C, which is fantastic. It's not proprietary and it's the future. All right, so let's talk about the Switch as a portable console. First and foremost, I'm not even close to speaking hyperbole when I say this. The Switch on the go is a magical portable experience. Seriously, it freaking rocks. Gaming on the go is like the best way to go. The eShop store and the cartridges aren't region locked either, so more games uh, can be enjoyed on your travels as you take this portable console with you everywhere you go. The bevel around the screen is quite large, especially compared to modern smartphones. However, it doesn't bother me at all, and some might get the tiny 720p screen, but it's crisp, it's bright, and it gets the job done. Only potential downside is the battery life. This is a skinny, tiny, thin little tablet box and the battery itself will last about three to six hours, depending on the screen brightness, depending on if you have Wi-Fi turned on and playing online, depending on if you're playing you know, a super graphics intensive game like Breath of the Wild or Mario Kart 8. Another very surprising and pretty nifty feature of the Switch is that there is in fact a third way to play, and that's in table mode or tablet mode. I don't know whichever one is official, but effectively the Switch has this built-in kickstand that you can kick out and play it that way as well. Now, this is a fantastic idea. However, the kickstand sucks. It snaps off way too easily, although it is also just as easily reattached. 
uh, but it doesn't support any other angles of play. Also, you have to be on a hard, flat surface in order for the Switch to not fall over. It won't, it, it'll just fall over because the kickstand doesn't have enough like grip or support or whatever. Um, also, uh, a slight issue is that because the USB-C cable is on the bottom of the console, there will be no charging while in table mode, although Nintendo does have a new accessory coming soon for that issue. Another slight problem, depending on how good your eyes are, is that when you're playing like two-player or even four-player split-screen in tablet mode, it can get really challenging to see. It's fantastic that you've got the full entire multiplayer experience on the go, just keep in mind, it is a 6-inch screen, so playing split-screen, it's going to be tiny, but it still works just as well. Uh, and the last element about the Switch is, of course, the OS, the software, and the controllers overall as a package. So the OS is pretty bare-bones, but it does work great. It's fast, it's functional, it's well-organized. Some people would like to have themes, and we do have two themes, light mode and dark mode. I prefer the dark mode because I think it looks a lot better. It's also surprisingly slightly un Nintendo like because all of their previous consoles since the GameCube has had animated menus and music to go along with their GUI. And the Switch doesn't have that. It does have sound effects when you click around, it, but it's just not the same. One really neat touch is that the OS and the software recognizes when the Joy-Cons are snapped back onto the console. It's a very nice touch. Additionally, controllers are super easy to pair and to switch around for multiplayer. If you want to have two Joy-Cons, then change your mind and, and put both those Joy-Cons into a grip and then get another Pro Controller. All that is really easy to handle, as well as third-party USB controllers. Also, the Joy-Cons have gyroscopes, so motion controls are still a thing, and that makes me super duper happy. All of Nintendo's first-party controllers have this new technology called HD Rumble, and it is super hard to describe, but it's absolutely incredible. It's actually kind of similar to the haptic feedback that we get in the newer iPhones, but it works totally different, and it's amazing. The Pro Controller is incredibly overpriced, but it's fantastic. It's, oh my goodness, it's such a good controller. However, none of the controllers have an audio jack and the system lacks Bluetooth, so no headphones for you in console mode. The Switch itself does have an audio jack, but you can only use that to listen to the game audio in portable mode. There is a party chat thing, but weirdly it's only through a smartphone app, so you'll need a phone in order to chat online with your friends. Yeah, it's, it's super weird. My only complaint really for the Pro Controller is that the trigger buttons are digital and not analog. And it's not, not a huge deal, but analog triggers are much, much better. And literally, they're just more capable and functional. The Pro Controller and the left Joy-Con also includes this snapshot button, where if you just press it, it'll actually take a, a screenshot of the game or whatever. If you press it and hold it, it'll record up to 30 seconds previously of the gameplay. So if you make a sweet trick shot in Mario Kart or, or see something crazy in, in a game, you don't need to have all this expensive recording equipment to record. And further, all of these pictures and videos can be shared on Facebook and Twitter, which is awesome. And you can also transfer them to a micro SD card to, for further editing on the computer. I would like to see Instagram support, but yeah, having Facebook and Twitter, like, that's pretty cool. And that's very forward thinking on Nintendo's part. All right, so we're in the data management section. We're gonna click over to manage software. We are running the 5.0 firmware, and everything is installed on the system memory with the exception of World of Goo, as you can see by that icon, is on the micro SD card. And we can see by these two icons here, the system memory and the SD card memory. And unfortunately, there is no way to directly transfer the games or the other data between the two. I did, however, find a relatively easy way to get these games onto the SD card, and that's by archiving software. So the archive option will only delete the game itself and not your user data or profile or anything like that. And you simply have to go back to the home menu, re-download it, and it'll automatically download to the SD card this time around. But let's get real, we should be able to directly transfer data between the two, just like the Wii, just like the Wii U, just like literally every computer ever. So hopefully one day we'll get an update where we can do that and not have to re-download stuff. So how does the Nintendo Switch do as a console? Well, let's do a console comparison and drop some hardcore specs. Of course, we're gonna be using teraflops, not necessarily the end-all be-all, solution of measurement uh, for performance, but I do find it interesting, and this information I scoured 
on the internet for like over three hours. So this is the most accurate information I could find. And the switch tops out at a full teraflop. So it's about three times faster than the last generation. Well, what about the competition? In fact, it's four times as powerful as the 360, which is fantastic. But how does it compare to the current generation of consoles? Surprisingly well, uh, the Xbox One, at least the launch Xbox One tops out at about 1.3 teraflops and the PS4 does have a slight advantage nearly doubling the Switch's performance. This gap has never been so narrow since the GameCube, PS2, Xbox days. Yeah, I mean, it holds up really well. And then what good are games if they're stuck at home and you can't bring them with you? Well, that's where the portable side of things comes in and these stats are absolutely impressive. Well, the Switch just blows it freaking right out of the water in portable mode, 320 gigaflops. So that's a 64 times increase in performance. And if we compare it to the launch 3DS hardware, it's almost 130 times more powerful. Uh, how does it compare to competition though? Well, the PlayStation Vita, so 10 to 20 times more powerful than the 3DS side of things. But again, Nintendo Switch just blows it out of the water 6.3 times faster than the PlayStation Vita. Still, the most amazing thing to me about the Switch is just how small and how tiny it is, especially when compared to its predecessor, the Wii U. I mean, look at how bulky this ancient piece of hardware is in comparison. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. And now for all the good stuff. First and foremost, it's an incredibly versatile console unlike the world has ever seen. On the home console space, it's very competent and powerful, but even more so in the portable experience, it's just a quantum leap ahead of anything else. The Joy-Cons and the HD Rumble are a joy to use, and everything about the system is easy and straightforward. Not only that, but there's a ton of support, both from indie and AAA developers, and overall, it's just a lot of fun. Sadly, there are a few negatives to the console, uh, mainly that it's an expensive package to begin with. Both the Joy-Cons and the Pro Controllers are also very expensive, and the system doesn't support Bluetooth or chat in any way. The kickstand is really crappy and can only be used on hard, flat surfaces. The battery it can be a, a hindrance depending on the game you're using. And also, just because of the nature of the console, there's no backwards compatibility. But even more of a tragedy, there's no word whatsoever on virtual console or if that will even be a thing. <clears throat> and Nintendo did just announce some cloud saves uh, through their online service that you have to pay for. That shouldn't have to be a thing that we pay for. And there's just gotta be a way to transfer those game saves to the SD card. Come on, please. Oh, and by the way, I made this really awesome poster. So if you wanna download it as like a wallpaper or to print it off or something, uh, there'll be a link in the description. So basically in conclusion, as a home console, it holds its own really, really well. And as a portable console, well, there's just nothing like it on the market today. Nothing can top the Switch.